Good morning, and welcome to worship at First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ here in downtown Columbus. This is our service of morning prayer and Holy Communion. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, and we are glad that you have come to join us for this glorious service of celebration. We uh, hope that if you're at home today, that you will prepare the elements for communion that we'll have later in the service. So uh, it might be juice or wine, it might be uh, some other elements of fluids. It, as well, prepare bread or crackers as we come to the time of communion. Most important, prepare your heart so that as we come to the table, we come with open hearts for God. I'm Tim Ahrens, and as we join together in worship today, as the senior minister, I am honored and pleased to be leading worship with the staff of First Church, Mr. Mark Williams, our director of Christian education, Reverend Emily Corzine, our associate minister, and Mr. Kevin Jones, our minister of music. We're glad to be together as a team here for you today as we lead worship. Today, I hope that as you step into worship, uh, this third Sunday, you will also be ready to light your Advent candles at home. We welcome the ghost family that lights the candles at their home, and we will celebrate their presence in this service as well. In addition, follow along through the service by going to the church website. You'll find us at www.first-church.org, and go to the worship prompt and join us for the 9 o'clock service. In addition, if you would like to share a gift today, an offering, both for the special offering of the day, but for the ongoing ministry and mission of the church, go to the Give Prompt or use the QR code in your bulletin today to share that gift. And we're grateful for all the gifts that you share today and have shared throughout this time. Now, let us celebrate the presence of God and worship together as we step into this Sunday of Advent. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. John the Baptist called people to repentance, to prepare them for the coming of God's reign. Let us too repent, that we may be ready for God who comes to us. God, we confess that it is not easy to wait for you. Our world worships the power that acts quickly through force. How difficult it is for us to wait for the power of your rule, which comes slowly through love. We admit that while claiming a desire, your reign of peace and justice, we take part in the ways of war, hatred, and injustice. We leave little room for you to act in our lives. We turn now to you in repentance and openness to your spirit. Forgive us and show us how to clear a path for you. Come to us in your Christ and reveal your reign on earth. Amen. God says, remember these things, O Israel, for you are my servant. You will not be forgotten by me. I have swept away your transgressions like a cloud and your sins like mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. I say to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. O oh God, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
the psalm of the day, Psalm 126. When God restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then is our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, God has done great things for them. God has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O God, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Again, we welcome you to First Congregational Church today, and on this third Sunday of Advent, we invite you to step into the peace that passes understanding, the peace of our Lord. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pass the peace with one another. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> How are you this morning? I hope you're awake. So I want to share with you something that's really, I really like. And during this time of Christmas and Advent, I like the lights. And here's the reason why. You know, December is kind of dark. And, uh, you know, we have our evening meal. And it's already dark and you feel like you've eaten. And it's time to go to bed because it's so dark. And what's going on around us right now with COVID and other things? We're in this darkness. But I love the lights. And the lights bring me great joy. And here's the reason why. Because when I look at the Christmas tree and I see all those lights, I see the candle with the flame burning. It reminds me that Christ is the light of the world. And so when I see all these lights, even though they may be in the shape of a reindeer or Santa Claus or whatever, those lights still remind me of Christ that the light of the world has come to us. And so I hope that you, the next time that you look at a Christmas tree or a candle, or when you get in the car with your mask on at night after dinner and you drive around the neighborhood and look at all the beautiful Christmas lights, that when you see all those lights, that you will be reminded that the light reminds you of Christ. And when we have Christ in our heart, then we too can share the light of Christ with others. So be a light in the world today. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for the light of the world, your Son. And thank you for all the different ways that can be, we can be reminded of the love of Christ and of you. In your son's precious name, amen. See you next week. We light the third candle of Advent to proclaim the coming of the light of God into the world. Holy One, we light this candle in delight in the sparkle of its outrageous reminder to rejoice. Let its flame cast light into shadowy places and show where work is to be done. Let a community of builders be formed in the light of joy. Let joy find home in our hearts and make space for your presence there as we work for justice and peace in the service of joy. God, God be, be with, with us in the light of joy. Let us pray. Merciful God, we give thanks that you send messengers like John to call us to greater faith. We ask that in these days we prepare for you in prayer and acts of holy compassion. Forgive us and lead us to your light. Amen. A 
our reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed and had sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to release and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display God's glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For God has clothed me with the garments of salvation and has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Our second reading comes from the Gospel according to John, beginning in the first chapter. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. Then they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. 
Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to tie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. As we gather together on this day, I am mindful that it was 89 years ago today that this building was dedicated, December 13th, 1931. So uh, it's truly served as a home uh, for so many through the generations. So as we come to this day, I celebrate our presence in downtown Columbus. And I also celebrate uh, that at the 11 o'clock service today, uh, people are joining us. Um, new members are coming into our fellowship, and it's what a joy it is that we have now become home to even more. Would you join me as we gather for prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Did you know that there are super earths in the universe? It's true. In fact, super earths may be some of the most common planets in our galaxy. In 2009, the Kepler Science Telescope discovered what began to be a collection of more and more data showing that there are 4,000 exoplanets. 30% of them, or 1,200, are referred to as super-Earths. And we see them as we see all of the planets because of light reflected from other suns in other galaxies far, far away. And a few percent of those super-Earths orbit within their host star habitable zone. So a super-Earth is an extrasolar planet with a mass higher than Earth's but substantially lower than the solar system's ice giants, Uranus and Neptune. Now I know, you're, stay with me here. <laughs> I'm not going off too far into the planetary conversation. But in case you're unfamiliar with the term super-Earth, it refers to only the mass of a planet. So it doesn't apply to anything that we know about the surface conditions or the habitability of that planet. In general, super-Earths are just defined by their mass 
And sometimes by temperature, if we can tell, by, by composition, if we know, by orbital properties and environments, but we don't know much about any of that. Through the Kepler Science Telescope, we've discovered so many of these super-Earths in 28 years. It is clearer every day that there are really planets and life forms like ours somewhere else in the universe. In a year in which our lives and our planet have been defined by a tiny coronavirus with spherical particles whose surfaces uniquely project uh, these projectiles, generally in the average size of about 120 nanometers in diameter, the 1,200 plus super Earths take us outside of our bodies, outside of our zones of comfort, outside of ourselves, and outside of our solar system into the expanse of the universe. As I sat reading about super Earths this week, and exploring the growing body of evidence for life far beyond our planet and solar system, I couldn't help but think of the light of the world, the light of our world, whose birth, life, and very existence we once again anticipate in, an, in the ancient scriptures and in our lives this week. Although John's gospel lesson focuses on John's arrival, John the Baptist's arrival proclaiming the coming of if you will, the super light, I cannot help but wonder about the designs and the choices God has made to give us this super light. Think about this. This is remarkable. I have so many questions about the light and our relationship to the light. How was it that our God, who created this vast universe, the earth, all stars, the swirling clouds of hydrogen gas that tie together the solar systems, the planets, the galaxies, that our God, who imagined and created and breathed design and all the colors of light and life into everything else in all of the universe and called it good, how is it that our God, this God, would see to bring all of these intricate patterns of the universe into one bundle of life and call that bundle the light of the world and place that bundle in the womb of a young woman and call her beloved and call him wonderful, counselor, everlasting, prince of peace. How could this be? How could we be so blessed to receive such a light as this in our lives? Moreover, how could we ever miss the blessing? How is it that we miss this blessing? How can we turn away and laugh it off or shrug it off? How could we, whom God also created in God's image, ignore this or pretend that the light never existed and never came? Forget about it. How could we, in a sky full of children, God's stars in this infinite universe, whom God has created to adore the light, how could we miss the dance, the song, the breath, the delightful smile, the healing words, and the hopeful presence? How could we miss it? How could we miss the peace that Christ brings? How could we not see and not respond to this love in the womb of the girl of Nazareth, whom the universe brought together in a very simple form to be the super light of the world. How could we miss the ancient harmonies of the angels' voices, the sounds that have come through time that bring joy to this planet and our lives? So how could anyone on this planet miss this when we could find on our blue and beautiful sister planets spinning 600 light years and 22 million calendar years away life and call it good. John came as a witness to testify to the light. He was not concerned about his own agenda 
Although clearly John knew what he believed was right and he knew what he believed was wrong. He was really concerned that people would see the light and not miss the light coming into the world. He was concerned about that, like a neon arrow pointing, here, the light, it's over here. John stood in the darkness of his time pointing to the light. He wanted everyone who had been created in the image of God, which means everyone in human history. He wanted everyone who was a star in the sky full of God's children to see that God's goodness had been fulfilled right before their eyes. John was very clear that he himself was neither the Messiah nor the prophet, that ever elusive Elijah. John was not even worthy to tie the sandal of the light. Even though John arrived like a thunder in the desert, it was Jesus who would later open the book of the prophet in his hometown of Nazareth and read with truth and authority, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. It was the light who shined light on this truth. It was Jesus who was the promise given to all the nations. It was Jesus who would fulfill Isaiah's prophecy to build up from the ancient ruins, to repair former devastations, to repair the ruined cities. It is Jesus that we need more now than ever before on this planet, in this time, in this darkness, to blow away the darkness of our times. We need the super light in our lives and in this universe. From the vast and distant beauty of super earths, I want to suggest to you something this week about light and love and life. I believe the same light of God which came into being at the foundation of the universe that John talks about in the opening words of his gospel found a place to shine in a feed trough in Bethlehem almost 2,020 years ago. And that same light can be found shining in each one of us every day. I believe that our God who loves us so much that God would give this light in the person of Jesus Christ also shines on us and in us and through us to others. I believe that each of us is created in the image of God and each of us is a star in that sky full of God's children. If we truly see each other as stars in the universe of God's creative design, then I wonder, why is it that through acts of violence and anger and aggression and neglect, one light of God believes it can blow out the light of another in this star-bound universe? In the depths of my soul, I ache each day when I consider the hatred and anger that runs too deep in too many people, that they act out of the darkness within them rather than the light, and they destroy the light in order to nurture the darkness. Like a candle in the wind, the light is blown out by some people as they face other people. And it usually happens after they've blown the light out in themselves or somebody else has wiped it out. And it pains me deeply to consider such grievous actions happen all too often against one another. We have to find a way to nurture God's light inside of ourselves so that we lift up and celebrate and protect the light of God inside of others with whom we share the planet. Here at First Church, we have artists all around us, and we have lots of artists from within our community. At the Columbus College of Art and Design, the Columbus Museum of Art, in our churches, in our homes, our artists sit down in peace every day to draw, to paint, to create, to mold something with their hands. They need light within themselves and outside of themselves to create something beautiful. They need a vision of what is possible, 
what is good, what is promised hope to bring something beautiful into the world. So I wonder, what if we collected all of the guns, all of the weapons, all of them, the ones the police have as well as the ones that are in too many homes and too many cars, what if we collected all of the weapons and brought them to one place? Let's say the social justice park. And there we destroyed them all. And we gave each of the former gun owners a box of crayons, a coloring book, or a canvas, or a palette of paints. What if the only sound we heard in the late afternoons and evenings in Columbus in December as darkness descends were the sounds of music surrounding the sounds of laughter and joy surrounding the sounds of crayons and paintbrushes and pencils on paper. The super light of God would come in uninvited into such a place and it would shine brighter than ever before. John came to testify to the super light. We who were able to find super earths that spin far outside our solar system need to figure out a way to nurture, protect, and support the light within each one of us. If we are to make peace and find peace in this world and in this universe, which God has created, each one of us needs to invite the light of the world into our lives. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, came to us in the Nazarene, holy human, holy divine, to show us what it means to be created in the image of God, what it looks like, what it feels like. So I invite you to invite the light of the world, the super light, into your heart, into your life, into your home this Christmas. It is simple and it is as beautiful as that. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of all wisdom, our hearts yearn for the warmth of your love, and our minds search for the light of your word. Increase our longing for Christ our Savior, and strengthen us to grow in love, that at the dawn of his coming we may rejoice in his presence and welcome the light of his truth. This day we offer prayers on behalf of this church, the community, and the world. Holy One, we offer the names and situations that are on our hearts and minds this day. Hear us as we pray aloud in the spaces where we are or in silence for the things that are too hard to name. Comforting God, be with all who are hurting this day in body, mind, or spirit. Strengthen them with what they need to be full and fully alive. And loving God, we ask that you be with uh, those who are recovering from COVID-19 around this city, those in our congregation, also those around the world. And we lift to you those who are um, grieving the loss of a loved one due to this illness, this virus, and this pandemic. Be with healthcare workers, nursing staff, environmental specialists, all those in the healthcare world as they are on the front lines of dealing with this virus. Strengthen us in our compassion to care for those in need this day and always. 
we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God of grace, ever faithful to your promises, the earth rejoices in hope of our Savior's coming and looks forward with longing to his return at the end of time. Prepare our hearts to receive Christ when he comes. Amen. Each week at First Church, we take an offering for a mission or ministry that works for issues of justice and mercy. This morning, we take one for Bethlehem on Broad Street, affectionately known as Bob's, is a long-standing ministry housed at First Congregational Church on Christmas Day. In 2020, and observing COVID-19 precautions, the Bob's planning team is stepping up to the challenge of this time and also stepping out of the building into our West parking lot. They will offer food and be a gathering place um, uh, for warm refreshments uh, and fellowship. So starting early, warm refreshments will be served and three local food trucks will be on hand to provide warm food throughout the late morning. Each truck is prepared to serve 150 guests at about $9 a guest. So your donations will help defray the cost of this warm meal on Christmas Day. Good Sam, our Good Samaritan Fund program directors, are partnering with Bob's this year for the distribution of their stock of toiletries. So please watch for church communications for ways that you may be able to volunteer as they are more limited than they have been in the past. Your monetary support of this program will go a long way to sustain others this Christmas.
Friends, the table is ready for you to partake in God's love and God's grace poured out for you. Gather the elements that you have and join in this feast. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks and praise for the glory and joy of your creation, for the work of reconciliation, for the promise of love eternal, and for those who walk with us. Continuing in these Advent days, help us. Make us alert to your presence among us. Make us mindful of the ways you work in our lives. Today, at this table, we remember your sacrifice for us on the cross. Blessed are you, O God. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our host at this table. Blessed is your Spirit who settles in us and among us. And within these gifts of bread and cup, your spirit transforms them, making them sacred and filling not for our own bodies, but for our souls. So pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and cup, that together they may symbolize the body and blood of our Lord. And with gratitude and praise, we come to your table, ready to be filled and ready to be sent out and ready to be your people in the world. In Christ we pray. Amen. On the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it, saying, Take, eat, this is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink it, remember me. And as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us join in the post-communion prayer. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have brought us from darkness to light, from slavery to freedom, from death to rebirth. Transform our lives with this heavenly food, that we may shine with your love and take to the world the risen life of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. In preparing to depart, we as a faith community have heard the word and are called to respond and serve. There are many ways to serve our neighbors and this faith community during this time of pandemic. Watch your email, church website, and Facebook for updates concerning our faith community and how we will organize to help those in need during this time. Just a reminder, all worship will be online until further notice, no in-person worship. Please note all the virtual studies and meetings being offered this week. Faith formation continues each week online with exciting opportunities for learning and growing in our faith. With a pre-K through fifth grade Wednesday Connection video on, posted on Facebook, the Youth Connections on Sunday evenings at 6.30 p.m. and our formative discussions for adults throughout the week. Please note all the upcoming Advent services and programs that will be online during this season. 
Next Sunday, December the 20th, will be the annual Lessons and Carol service beginning at 4 p.m. This wonderful service will be online and you will find details on the links and program in the Depart to Serve Leaflet and in the church website. We are partnering with the Ohio Health to give words of encouragement to healthcare staff during this challenging time. We ask you to hold them in your daily prayers. Anyone can participate from beautiful ink pens to crayons, pictures, stickers, whatever, offering words of kindness, wish them patience or courage or thank them for their service during this difficult time. Address your note to healthcare worker and use the church mailing address. We will get them to Ohio Health. The pandemic cannot get in the way of our children in sharing the good news of Christ's birth. Our mistletoe marchers will present the ABCs of Christmas and our older elementary children will present O Zoom All Ye Faithful today at 12.30 p.m. It will happen today, 12.30 p.m. The link is listed in the Depart to Serve uh, leaflet and be sure to share with grandparents and family members as well. If you need to be in touch with Reverend Aarons or Reverend Corazine for emergency pastoral care or name a prayer request, please call 614-733-4547. This number is listed in the Depart to Serve leaflet. Just a reminder that your giving can be done through PayPal, Easy Tithe, or simply writing a check and sending it in the mail. No matter how you are giving, be sure to mark it for the mission of the week and or to the regular church budget. If you have not done so, please like us on the First Church Facebook page. There will be numerous postings through this time for engagement, activities, and devotion. So again, please monitor your email, the church website, and Facebook page. We invite you to the coffee, virtual coffee hour after the service today. You may find the link in the Depart to Serve leaflet. Just click on the link and it will take you to the coffee hour. Let us sing the closing hymn as we depart with a heart to serve. Thanks, Thanks be to God. As we go forth today, let us go forth with the super light of God shining in our lives. Let us go out to think of a way that we can be light shine in this world for others. And so may the light of God shine on you and in you and through you to others. <laughs>